What's cracking? Big dogs. We got some breaking news. We got some breaking news that we in the headquarters here are breaking. You definitely didn't hear it first from here. Not from my mouth hole. Uh, some devastating news out in Baltimore, man. I don't know what the fuck they got going on in their diets, in their tendons, on their field, on their <clears throat> medical staff. But the running backs are going down quick, man. We've got Dobbins out for the season. Justice Hill out for the season. And newly minted Gus Edwards, the starting running back, supposed to run rampant this year. There is fear that Gus Edwards has... Suffered a potentially serious knee injury. A potentially uh, season-ending knee injury. Very possibly a torn ACL, which will land him on the IR, and he'll be out for the year. So there you go. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill. The trio of, of running backs in this Ravens backfield, all out. So the question becomes, what happens to this offense? They have Tyson Williams. I have been telling y'all to blow the fab budget on Tyson Williams if you were in Dynasty Leagues. Uh, I was only able to get him in one of them, but it was the one that I showed you all this morning uh, where I'm very, very lacking of depth there. So, question becomes, backfield, Tyson Williams, Le'Veon Bell, who was newly added to the practice squad. Did they go out and sign somebody else? I saw someone just drop uh, Latavius Murray in the chat. He was just released from the Saints. That would make some sense. I think they're very comfortable. He, he, here's here's the way that we they confirm the ACL. Okay, so apparently we've confirmed the ACL. Here's the way that we're going to look at this. It's not Le'Veon Bell over Tyson Williams. Tyson Williams, we can basically expect to go into the year as the starter right now. We can expect him to be the Gus Edwards role or what Gus Edwards was supposed to be about 15 minutes ago. It's calling me one thing. Eddie Lacy come bike. Huh? Huh? Any takers? Yes, Royce Freeman was uh, was picked up by the Carolina Panthers. So, we have Tyson Williams, who, if you guys are unfamiliar with, I have his player profiler up here. Athleticism standpoint, 5'11", 220. He, he's built like Gus Edwards. Really, really strong showing at his pro day. 4'5", 3". Puts him in the near 80th percentile for weight adjusted speed score. So he's a bigger guy. He's thick, but he's got breakaway speed. He just didn't produce at the college level. He transferred around a lot of places, which is tough to kind of settle down and get the starting role. Um, best comparable, Damian Harris. That's the type of player he is. He's a Damian Harris type player. They love him out there in Baltimore. That's the way you have to look at it. Like one of these guys was a player on their roster. One of these guys was a guy that they loved enough to keep on their 53-man roster the other guy, Le'Veon Bell, was a the guy they picked up afterwards, okay? You want both of these guys. If you're if you're in a league right now where Tyson Williams wasn't picked up, here's what I'm going to do. If I'm in a season-long redraft, if I'm in a league where he's available on the waiver wire, I'm probably blowing my entire fab budget, okay? Because where Gus Edwards was being taken right now in – redraft leagues over the last four or five days, Gus Edwards was the fourth or fifth round pick that I think people just saw as a high volume play. Okay. Um, Tyson Williams should be looked at as like a fifth round value right now. If you're in redraft, fifth round, sixth round, something in there, the starting running back for the Ravens is going to be a spot that flourishes no matter where the fuck he, uh, no matter where his talent land, no matter what you think about him, okay? Um, so the way you should be looking at Fab is if, if there was a player that you could have drafted in like the fifth or sixth round in a redraft league, they are worth pretty much all your Fab budget. You might possibly be getting a starting running back. And this was the point I was getting across in the a couple of the articles that I had in the draft guide as well as the uh, some of the articles that I have put out since then some of the videos I've talked about. It. If you're ever if it's ever going throughout the summer, right, and there is hype around a running back, 
especially in Dynasty, you pick that player up, okay? I don't care who it is. I don't care what his name is. I don't care what team he's on. But if there's a guy that they're saying, oh, this guy is impressing in camp. This guy is pushing for starter snaps. This guy is pushing for the second down roll. You pick that guy up because the upside of having a starting running back on your bench in Dynasty is massive. The downside of not of him not hitting was nothing. You just blew some offseason fab budget on him, okay? This, this is such a, an important point. It's like with the James Robinsons, with the Philip Lindsays, with the Tyson Williams. When you heard that Tyson Williams was the guy above Justice Hill, you blew the fab on him. You blew the fab on him on the off chance that Tyson Williams earned a role in his backfield, which is an extremely, extremely valuable role. I, I dropped this stat in the, a few of the J.K. Dobbins videos that I have put out over the summer, but the stat was that like uh, Ravens running backs have averaged, I want to say it was like 22 rushing touchdowns a season and 30 something carry it was something ridiculous where like it didn't matter what running back it was it didn't matter the, how fucking crispy is that underdog fantasy sign is that not the most beautiful thing you've ever fucking seen look at it look at it go sign up on underdog fantasy.com right now use promo code bdg when you deposit 10 bucks on there the ravens the ravens backfield is just going to get an insane amount of touches because that's how their offense is set up lamar jackson might actually rush for like 1200 yards right now but Tyson Williams is going to be the beneficiary of it. Le'Veon Bell will probably see a decent amount of pass catching opportunity there, though, at least for whatever ratio you want to talk about it being in the Ravens' backfield. Is Le'Veon Bell a guy that I'm blowing my fab on? Not all of it, no. But there is an off chance that Le'Veon Bell, maybe he worked out hard this offseason. Listen, if you watched him play at all last season, it was like Le'Veon Bell, we're dinging the bell at the end of the fight. There's nothing left in him, okay? That's more that's more predictive of of what we saw from Bell last year. He didn't have the juice, he didn't have the explosiveness. And I would have said, hey, you know what? Maybe it was just on the Jets and the team stinks. But he goes with the Chiefs, stinks as well. So we've got a decently long enough track record now where it's pretty safe to say Le'Veon Bell's probably washed. That being said, though, the the backfield is valuable enough that you want to throw darts at the all these pieces. It's Tyson Williams, it's Le'Veon Bell, and then it's if they sign somebody else. I'm okay taking a shot on them too. But if you're blowing fab, you want to blow it on Tyson Williams, okay? He should have been drafted in your redraft leagues for sure. But if he wasn't, if he's available on the waiver, you're picking him up. You're using your number one waiver priority on him if you play in a non-fab league. If you have fab, listen, personally, personally, I would probably blow almost all my fab on it. I think he's going to get a lot of carries. I think they kept him on the roster over all the other guys. They didn't sign other guys until the injuries happened because they love this kid, okay? Um there is a chance that he rolls into 10, 12 touchdowns this year just because. And again, like looking at his athletic profile, it's he's not just some fucking schlub. Like we look, we, people getting excited about, about Tony Jones. When you look at Tony Jones, you're getting excited about him being the number two in a high-powered offense. But what is there actually to be excited about in terms of his profile, not much. He's not athletic. He's kind of big, but he's slow. He doesn't have a good burst. He doesn't have good agility. So you look at Tony Jones, and then you look at Tyson Williams, and you say, okay, maybe this guy has a little bit more to him than just being a big guy, right place, right time. Maybe he's got real NFL upside type athleticism that will propel him to Top 20, top 15 status. If you're getting a top 15 running back, which is almost indicative of the situation that he's in, I would say any starting Baltimore running back is going to have uh, top 15 upside, if not higher. You're blowing fab on that. You just do it. It's crazy that it happened between the last preseason game and the start of the regular season. Like This is why we tell you to draft as late as you possibly can so injuries like this don't happen. But injuries like this still happen, so we need to know what to do. I'm going to look at both. I'm only in two redraft leagues. I'm in the thump and thrash, uh, which I believe Tyson Williams. Wow. Kyle hit him with the. Whoo. Damn. Kyle picked Tyson Williams up one day ago, yesterday, for 21 fab dollars. I did not win because I only put 15 fab dollars down. Whew. Things you hate to see. 101. 
E-Town get down. McNanny fucking sniped him. And I think you're the, in the vlog, you're going to see me crying about not getting him. Uh, he took him late. Wish I took him, but he is rostered there. If he was available on the waiver wire, I would be blowing a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fab on him. All right. That's that's the way I look at it. ACL tear is confirmed. Yes, we uh, we figured that out. How about Latavius Murray? Yes, I mean, listen, there are players that they can pick up. They can pick up Latavius Murray. Um, if that's the case, yeah, I, I would hold. I would hold. Uh, I would hold on to Latavius for right now until the dust settles. But they're going to make a move really quickly. Like the start of the season is this weekend. I don't think they're waiting a week to see if they need to pick somebody up. I think we'll know quickly. Unless you guys are telling me that they already made calls to Latavius Murray or some shit. But I think they're going to have to pick somebody else up. Like, they're going to have to. They only have these two and, like, Trenton Cannon or some shit. Damn. Freeman or Devonta, uh, Devonta Freeman to the Ravens makes a little bit of sense, too. The, only, the problem is that they want a guy like Tyson Williams. Like, they... I don't think they want a, a pass catching back. They don't need it. That's not how their offense runs. So Tyson Williams is the guy for me. On the other note, all these DeAndre Swift uh, rumors going around. So he's not being accused of mur- I don't know the whole story. Uh, he's not being accused of murder per se. I want to say what happened was like he was out somewhere and like two dudes he knew were trying to set him up to be uh, robbed and like take his shit when he was out. I'm I'm not really sure what happened from there. I think one of them got killed, one of the dudes that was trying to rob him. And I don't even know if it was him or his security that popped him, but whatever it was, I believe it's self-defense, which is allowed where it happened in Philadelphia. So I don't think anything is going to come of Swift being a murderer per se, but I mean, it, it could be a little bit risky just given the fact that like they could put him on the uh, commissioner's example list, but this is all fucking speculation. So do not take any of this into account what I'm saying right now into what you're doing, but hold on for dear life. If you have Jamal Williams, that's all I'll say. Is Tyson any good? I mean, that's the question, but. It take it take money to make money, and uh, I will gladly spend on Tyson if he's available on my waiver wire. I mean, there's a lot there's a lot that could happen here, right? Should I drop Gus Edwards or Tyson Williams? Yes, Gus Edwards is out for the fucking year, guys. He's out for the year, torn ACL. Do you think they try and trade for the? F- to the 49ers for one of their running backs. I mean, it's possible. Uh, I think it's extremely unlikely because you've almost rarely ever, you know, you don't trade rookies and that's what a lot of the 49ers backfield is. It's Elijah Mitchell. It's Trey Sermon. And then I highly, highly doubt the 49ers trade Raheem Mostert. So I don't think that would happen. It's possible that you trade back. They go to Houston. Houston's got a lot of like shitty backs. that would kind of fit the system. Like Philip Lindsay would be like a JK Dobbins light. Mark Ingram sucks, but he was, he knows, the, he knows the play, uh, the playbook. Because he was obviously there the last couple of years, so that could that could make a little bit of sense. But Trenton Cannon, yeah, I'm I'm good. Trenton Cannon's like he's just a pass catching back, and they don't do that there. And uh, we haven't heard a, a, an ounce of buzz of him doing anything this off season. I mean, listen, here's the thing: like, don't take my word for it. I don't know exactly what they're going to do, but if I'm betting, if I'm putting money down, if I'm betting on what's going to happen, it's going to be a lot of. Uh, Tyson Williams, it is going to be a decent amount of Le'Veon Bell once he gets up to speed, but I don't think he's going to get a lot of carries. I think they just want someone that they could trust that's healthy at this point. Check through Twitter. Available free agents right now. Latavius Murray, Todd Gurley, Adrian Peterson, Devonta Freeman, LaShawn McCoy, Lamar Miller, Deonta Foreman, Frank Gore, Chris Thompson, TJ Yeldon, DeAndre Washington, Elijah Holyfield. 
I can't believe you threw Elijah Holyfield in there like he's an NFL caliber back. That's that's incredible. Um, so Latavius Murray makes sense. Todd Gurley is just extremely washed. I don't know why they would take him. Uh, Adrian Peterson, I feel like, makes a little bit of sense there. Like, if he went there, I would be a little bit worried about Tyson Williams. Um, I'm not really worried about Devonta Freeman, Todd Gurley, LaShawn McCoy. Definitely not Lamar Miller down to Foreman. I could see Frank Gore going there and just being wildly fucking annoying. TJ Yeldon would be a nice little fit there. I would kind of like TJ Yeldon if he went there. At this point, no, I don't have confirmation that the ACL is confirmed. But people in the chat have said that it is. I haven't seen whatever it is that people are seeing, though. Marcus Peters also, shout out to Marcus Peters. Um, he also got hurt, non-contact injury, so terrible, terrible day for the Ravens. Damn. Well, that's it. Just wanted to hop in here and get uh, get some news out there for you. Tyson Williams, grab him wherever you can, everywhere you can. Blow the fab. Pick up Le'Veon Bell as well. You just never know what's going to happen in that backfield. Um, ER7, I can't believe you wasted money to try to pull this. This is like Snacks' favorite joke in the world. And I've never once in my entire life laughed at it. Not even when I was 11 years old. I'm happy for you, though. All right, well, uh, hate to see it. I'm out of here. Goodbye. Oh, I guess I'll do this last super chat real quick. Arthur, uh, drop Landry for him. I'm stacked wide receiver. Adams, Ridley, A.B., Waddle, Deontay Johnson, I'm assuming that is. Oh, you motherfuckers just keep dropping super chats in here, so I have to stay on, huh? Uh... Yeah, yeah, I'm totally fine with that. Get the starting running back. Just get him. Just get him by any means necessary. Not saying he's going to hit, but if he does, it was completely worth the risk. All right, I'm out of here. I can't just stay for all the super chats. I'm sorry. I love you. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Goodbye.